barn. The rope broke. That scared him straight for five months, but he got back on the meth with a vengeance. I have run through the house and run right beside him, shooting holes in my ceiling, firing empty cartridge shells over their heads because I thought that there was somebody upstairs in my house. I could hear them walking. My house has got over 200 bullet holes in it. On February 21st, 2002, so sick from the meth he couldn't even stand up, he asked his wife, who threatened to leave him, to lie down with him. I said, okay, I'm laying down with you. We'll talk for a minute, but I'm still leaving. I knew then that was it. I wasn't going. I was ending it. He reached over me and grabbed the loaded gun that was propped up in the corner on my side. And I felt it on my stomach. I kicked the safety off. I hollered. And I raced up and I reached for the gun, but it was too late. I never even had a chance to grab it before he pulled the trigger. The bullet ripped into his chin and came out between his eyes, literally blowing off his face. And he remembers it all. I remember feeling what it felt like when my face blowed off. And I grabbed my face on both sides and fell off into the floor and started moaning. And I told my wife I was sorry. I remember the last thing I told him is, is uh, is, oh, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts so bad. The pictures I'm going to show you are very graphic from the Weekly County Sheriff's Department. It's me laying in my bedroom floor with my face blown off. And he remembers being in hell. And I looked up in the dark and started screaming for God to please help me. Please, God, help me. And, that's, and then all of a sudden it sounded like thousands and millions of people screaming. But I filled up with fear that it felt like I was going to explode from the inside with a bomb whenever I realized where I was at. As soon as he awakened in the hospital, he wrote about what he'd seen, scratches of fear, scribbles of gratitude for the gift of a second chance. The first time he saw his face, which doctors had only begun to piece together. It freaked me out really bad. I seen it reflection in a window at the trauma unit. They wouldn't bring no mirror to me. The first time he knew everything would be all right, when his wife walked up to his hospital bed. She hadn't left me. She had stayed there with me. And told him she was pregnant with their seventh child. They named the baby Gabriel. A messenger angel. For me, he was a message from God that everything was going to be OK. And then I did have a second chance. He has made much of that chance. Good one. In his own home. There. No drugs in 21 months. Even the cravings are gone now. Oh, that was sweet. My kids don't have to live 